الحمد لله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أتي الله أتي رسول أول الأمر منكم and always a reminder from myself and abdukul ajeezu da'eefu miskeenu zalim jahalim but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. InshaAllah Haj Shahid let's recite Surah 4 verse 64 Jauka. إِنَّهُمْ إِذَا ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسِهُمْ جَوْكَ وَنِسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ Surah 4 verse 64 inshaAllah أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرحمن الرحيم وما أرسلنا من رسول إلا ليطاع بإذن InshaAllah as a reminder was from myself in this blessed month that only Allah come into our lives to perfect our deen whether people accept it or don't it doesn't matter. That Allah has a, a darajat and a way in which to be approached and He gives its understanding to whom He wants. When the second ten days of maghfirah is opening then all they'll come into our lives and remind, remember the way in which to ask Allah for forgiveness so that that forgiveness is stamped and sealed with a certificate of authenticity and approval. And Holy Qur'an is Allah's ancient uncreated word. So the 4th surah, 64th verse, Allah is saying, and that we did not send any messenger except to be obeyed. And that obedience is by permission of Allah And then when they're a zalim to themselves, so it requires somebody to believe that they're a zalim. We gave the key before on this ayat al kareem this doesn't make sense from this point on to many people because they don't feel themselves to be zalim, they feel they're good. And shaitan fools them, why you have to keep asking forgiveness like these cuckoo people, you didn't do anything wrong. So he fools, the, the worst fooling of shaitan is to make a servant feel that they've done nothing wrong to Rahman and that why they have to make so much forgiveness, why you have to make istighfar all the time? You're good, you're good. And they said that there are 700 sins a day that should be abstained from. How many of those people are falling into? People don't think of more than three or four. But what Allah counts or calls us to account is from the day of promises of what I bestowed upon you, you're a heavenly being, you have heavenly knowledges, you, you know what's required of you. You went and jumped down to this earth and immediately forgot everything. Doesn't mean that we're not accountable. 
So then awliya come into our life and say, no we like the, the teachings of the Prophets Subhanika Laila Anta Subhanika Inni Kuntum Mina Dhalimeen, Glory be to you Ya Rabbi and I am verily an oppressor to myself, known and unknown what I've done wrong. Of whatever I think I, I know still there's an ocean of completely I didn't understand what I'm doing wrong that may be angering you, may be stopping my rizq, may be uh, stopping every opening, every, every type of uh, barakah coming to me is maybe blocked by something. So the first step of this understanding and the secret of this ayat al kareem is that, Ya Rabbi I'm an oppressor. And if you believe that you're an oppressor then the du'a of oppressors is not accepted, right? There's your key. If I say I'm an oppressor then I, then I don't feel that anything I'm doing is accepted. This is a way for me to be humbled. Who am I Ya Rabbi? I'm an oppressor to myself, a hypocrite of, of acting one way and, and, and being another way in, in, in front of people, in, in front of you, in front of the angels. When we realize that we're an oppressor immediately we understand that nothing of what I do is going to be accepted. So then Allah says, if you're of those category and you realize that you have oppressed yourself, لَيْنَا أَنْتَ سُبْحَانِكَ إِنِي كُنْتُمْ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ فَاسْتَجَبْنَا نَجَيْنَا مِنَ الْقَمْ And that we provide a najat for our servants. If you accept that you're an oppressor to yourself, Allah will provide a najat and a way of salvation. This then Ayatul Kareem is its understanding that when they have wronged themselves and the word is oppression, when they have put zulumat upon themselves, they have to come to you Ya Sayyidina Muhammad because Allah talks from malakut, nothing of Qur'an is on time. Everything is Allah's ancient eternal world, word for all His creation. In billions of galaxies this is the same truth for all these galaxies. That they have to come, these oppressors, they have to come to you. So they have to come to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and ask forgiveness of Allah. So this is Allah's now criteria, they have to come into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad they have to ask forgiveness of Allah in that Divinely ocean, that Divinely presence. And the Messenger Allah asks forgiveness for them and you have to ask how they change this too and that the Messenger of Allah asks forgiveness for them. Is that not only that but Allah is saying that once you ask my forgiveness you have to ask the forgiveness of Sayyidina Muhammad And when Prophet begins to ask forgiveness for the servant and present that to Allah's Divinely Presence, Allah then gives the covenant that they would have found Allah accepting of repentance and most merciful. So means then that's the key to our forgiveness instead of wondering if Allah forgave me, didn't forgive me, if Allah deems me to be zalim, deems me to have bad characteristic. That's why nothing opens for people's lives and they're in so much difficulty on this earth. And tariqah has come to teach the one whom has no difficulty is Sayyidina Muhammad in Malakut. How much he suffered in this dunya of difficulties and hardships for his nation and the oceans in which Allah has dressed and given of these realities. Then Allah is reminding all of creation in which there is no time for Allah that when you're an oppressor to yourself that go to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Then tariqah comes like all their teachings are like beads and your hikmah and wisdom is on how to tie your beads together so one day you have a tasbih. That becomes your oceans of hikmah. All their teachings are like pages unless you put them together it doesn't become a book for you of understanding. So when they're teaching you how then to be in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Either you fly to Medina or you attend the majlis of Salli ala Nabi 
Prophet is not in every masjid just because it's the masjid and people are praying, but he's in the attendance of the majlises that are praising upon his reality and asking Allah and praying upon the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad and Prophet said that, I will mention me once and Allah will let my soul to come to you and praise upon you ten times. That's now how to have an association with Sayyidina Muhammad One is by your durood al-sharif that continuously making your durood and salawats at home and as soon as you make your salawats then you begin to ask, Ya Rabbi asking for forgiveness, Ya Siri Ya Rasul Kareem take my case to Allah take difficulty away from me, put these hardships away from me. These are Allah's own words in Qur'an, it's not our making up of this, Allah is saying, Jauka. That run, go to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and if you were taught by these awliya they would teach you how to receive that presence. Strongest presence is the majlis in which the shaykhs are present because they're the reflection of Sayyidina Muhammad Muhibbeen, they, they reflect the love and the immense ocean of that reality and that Prophet must be present with them in those associations. Because he has the best of khuluq, the best of character that he knows they're coming for love and Prophet is coming to love them and you'll be with whom you love. All these hadiths are showing the same reality. Because they have an immense love Prophet is then you will be with whom you love and whom you love will always be with you. And this is their, their soul bond. And as a result of their majlis, their associations whether they're in person or live, as soon as their majlises begin you start to make your istighfar, you start to ask in your heart, Ya Rabbi forgive me, forgive me for the sake of Sayyidina Muhammad Ya Sayyid Ya Rasul Kareem that please ask Allah for my forgiveness. Where I came short please ask Allah to take away my difficulties, please ask Allah to expand my rizq and my sustenance, whatever the servant is in need of. And these are the second 10 days in which we're asking Ya Rabbi from this rahmah and mercy that you dressed upon us, grant this maqfirah and this forgiveness. And when Allah see the servant understanding this reality and asking in this reality, then Allah's promise is that you would have found us most forgiving and most merciful. Means that the believer then is in their heart, in their heart like a stamp. Allah no doubt is accepting that because of the love of Prophet not because of me or who I am but because I'm asking in that name, in that love, in that reality Ya Rabbi grant me your maqfirah, grant me your forgiveness. Whatever I'm coming short on, whatever my deeds are not appropriate Ya Rabbi grant me from that ocean of forgiveness and that Prophet take my case and say, Ya Rasul Kareem please. In the presence of Allah ask on my behalf and that's why they call Rasul Kareem the immense oceans of love, immense oceans of, of rahmah and Allah wants it that way so that the servant dis- establishes the relationship and the love and the respect and ihtiram for Sayyidina Muhammad And throughout our life, our life is filled with wasila. If you want a loan you have to go to a bank officer and not just any bank officer, you have to find a bank officer who knows you. Otherwise nobody gives you a loan, they say, oh, I don't know what this paper is. So it means in everything in our life we always need some representation. Although Allah just says, I'm closer to you than your jugular vein, He didn't say, I'm listening to you and then I'm going to accept everything you're asking. I have a system in which I want you to go to the presence and humble yourself and go to my Habib and my beloved one and in that presence of Sayyidina Muhammad ask my forgiveness. And that not shaitan and his devils can never do that. That was then the, the madhab of shaitan that said, no way I'm not ever going to ask. I'm not going to ask when they were alive and I'm not going to ask when they passed away. And that then brought him to be his satanic distance <laughs> and because of that his murids never do that. They don't even think that way. 
and the people of the heavens and the people whom Allah has granted His oceans of maghfirah that there are the bounties of abundance, that from them are overflowing oceans of abundance. Because Allah dress them with so much forgiveness wherever they go are oceans of forgiveness that are continuously just dressing upon people because of Allah's rida and satisfaction upon the souls. We pray that Allah dress us and bless us with this, this love and this understanding and opens up many, many different understandings. That uh, why the majlis, why the mawlids, why all the salawats, why all of these practices to bring this key, La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah this has to be understood. The secret of La ilaha illallah will never open to creation unless he's in the secret of Muhammadun Rasulullah Everyone who's not with that reality they have a lower understanding. But when Allah want to grant the servant the highest level of understanding then they come through the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah to understand the reality of La ilaha illallah and that become Basira Lam Jalala, that becomes the Zulfiqar of Imam Ali Salam. When they came to that handle and Allah wanted now to show that you want to know my reality, it's reflecting in Muhammadun Rasulullah because you can never approach me. As much as you approach my Divinely Presence, I'll be moving away from you, it's not, not for you to, to reach that. So then your reality is to go to the mirror of La ilaha illallah which is Muhammadun Rasulullah Whatever you want to know of, of the zat and the essence and, and the reality of that Divine Ocean you must look for it in Muhammadun Rasulullah And Allah will make all your nazar that no matter how much you look you'll always find Muhammadun Rasulullah Even you look you think you know the name of Allah because you learned Allah. Allah has infinite names, it's just one name for you to understand. And when you look to the name of Allah what do you have? Alif and Lam, Lam, He. In every, every huruf you find Sayyidina Muhammad Doesn't mean you found Allah, this is a name that is a reality that encompasses Allah's attributes and essences, it's no at all Allah's We're going to confuse you. <laughs> Don't think because Allah gave you name you know Allah, there's nothing like unto Allah what, 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 what does that mean? Allah gave a name as a reality, this name will encompass my attributes and my essences but don't think you ever know me just because you know my name. There's a lot of people who know Shaykh Nojan on the internet and they may even watch a lot of videos and they think they know me so well. But you think that if they came in my presence they would know anything of who I am? No, you only know what I let you to know by what I taught you. You don't know who I am and I'm nothing, I'm like a donkey in creation. You're talking about the Creator of creation, you, you can know or does anyone even know Prophet What was the sound of Sayyidina Muhammad What did the Sahabi hear of that reality and what did it sound like? What type of energy did they receive when Prophet was reciting Qur'an for them or speaking for them? Just because we're reading hadith we don't think we know Prophet Even if you see an image in your muraqabah you don't think you know Prophet You know what he allows you to know and they encompass very little of his knowledge. And Allah describe you encompass what Allah allows you to encompass of His knowledge. So in, even when you look at the huruf they open up the huruf and they find within the huruf is a reality of Sayyidina Muhammad because it's always going to be La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah. 
These two rivers will be everywhere you look and you never look where you don't see that because it's not for you. Allah's essence is somewhere hidden, it's not for creation. Even you look into the alif, you say, oh I, I've, I've heard your teachings shaykh, I know okay the lamb, the lamb and the hay in Arabs call Masiwa Allah, all that's other than Allah because in the lamb, lamb hay is creation. But alif holds the izza and the might of Allah but alif is alif. Alif lam fa. So now there's a lam in there again. So it means now there's a reality in that. So it keeps, the alif keeps expanding away because it just said alif lam fa. So that if you open it again and again, again the alif will open itself. So it means Allah is teaching in the huruf which is like an like a amazing mathematics when these people write these mathematical phrases. The huruf is, is showing the alif always stays away. As much as you try to go into the alif, I want to understand this izza, this alif becomes alif, lam fa. Alif just now moved away and the most you'll ever get to know is the lam fa. Because you go back to the alif, alif again becomes alif lam fa and the alif moved. <laughs> so those of you who are understanding huruf, you'll understand how this alif is ever escaping. Allah is saying, it's not for you, it's not adab to try to go into the reality of Allah You don't even know your own names, seven names you must have in their presence, know the reality of those names, its purpose, why Allah dressed you in those names, which darajat in paradise are these names. If you don't know yourself, how are you going to claim to think you know Allah So. InshaAllah Allah dress us, bless us with these understandings, these oceans of reality and for us to run to the door of Sayyidina Muhammad asking for Allah's maqfira forgiveness, asking for Sayyidina Muhammad immense oceans of forgiveness that to, to dress us and bless us, wash us and clean us. For our light once we know the marifah is my light comes from Sayyidina Muhammad So whatever difficulty I'm trying to put upon myself that I don't want to harm that light and that gift that was given to me from the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad must be like a perfectly beautiful pearl, a treasure that we keep within our heart, we keep it and try to keep it pure and purified. Only the muhibeen and the lovers of that reality when they begin to understand this is a gift, this light, this faith, this reality of the soul is a gift from the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad when you truly understand it's not for you to destroy but it's a gift from the one whom you love then all day long you're crying that if I did anything wrong to it, I don't want to harm it. I want to nourish this light, I want to perfect this light, I want to make this light to be beautific, I want its realities to come out. You hold such a, a respect and ihtiram and, and esteem because it's a gift. Life is a gift and our soul is a gift and we pray that Allah open for us its understanding so that we want to achieve once we understand it's not mine to destroy, it's not mine to not do anything with. It was a gift and Prophet is waiting that, what you're going to do with this gift I gave you? Especially I gave you even more love than other people. I gave you to come in through a door that out of a town of how many people are in, in Vancouver? 19 million in BC, 53 million in all of Canada, 19 million in BC and six people sitting there. So you, you owe a big something to Prophet and in this world of 7 billion how many are watching online? You owe a gift to Prophet this is what means by khawas, if Allah wanted it for everybody they would have broadcasted this signal and all these shaykhs on stadiums because they would have been like Doritos free for everybody. <laughs> Come get your chips and soda and, and Allah would have it in the middle of halftime in the Super Bowl 
we would come out and talk about the <laughs> realities but it's not like that and Prophet described it's like a dark… it's like a star in a dark night. As the world becomes darker the stars become fewer but brighter. So means these few zawiyas around the earth that hold these realities, these thousands of people who are watching in their homes they are custodians of these realities. So means then this is a, a gift from Prophet and what you're going to do with this gift? Well there are millions on the outside and Allah say, you don't do anything with the gift no problem we put you out and we'll put somebody new and there'll be another one who'll be elevated to reach towards that gift. That's why you're accountable for the time that you have, the money that you have, the, the understanding that you have, everything you're accountable to Allah what are you doing to do with it? And that's why then the shaykhs teach that come have a himma, have a, have a, have a, a zeal for your way and, and be eager to, to achieve. This is not about you just for yourself what you think you're going to achieve, this is about what you've been given from this light and how are we going to show our appreciation for it. Especially now when they keep teaching the time is very close, Sayyidina Mahdi Salam is right uh, behind the, the veil and the events that are going to come onto this earth that people can't even imagine what type of hardships, what type of, of difficulties and at that time Allah want to bestow His gifts upon this creation. These Muhammadiyoon they receive their gifts because of the sake of Sayyidina Muhammad not because Allah likes you, it's because Allah loves Sayyidina Muhammad and He made them to be Muhammadiyoon. And as a result of that Muhammadiyoon reality they will inherit what is necessary for the difficulties that open upon this earth. Difficulties that people can't imagine and openings that can't even be understood of how Allah will protect people, what will the soul's capabilities be. We've described many times from their eyes comes a fire, that's not something understood but you see it in fantasy movies, you see it come out. Yeah. It come out as a fire and put the believer into a hall. So when the believer looks at these servants their eyes make them go into a hall. But that's not the case for shaitans. <laughs> when the shaitans see their eyes a fire comes to burn them and anyone carrying a satanic light a fire will come from their eyes and begin to burn them in which they run from the heat and the energy they feel that burning within themselves because of the devils that occupy those insan. What their soul is capable of that if they take their soul out they can hold the earth in their hand. The vastness and the power of the soul is not something understood. If Allah at that time describes for their soul to come out and lift people up that's up to Allah But all of these are Muhammadan gift. These are the gifts for the ahbab and the lovers of Sayyidina Muhammad because Allah don't want that difficulty upon them and opens for these servants these realities. That's why this is not about where to run, where to hide, this is about getting your reality. What your fate is run straight into it to receive your realities, to receive the character, receive your diploma with all of that dress then Allah knows the situation that he's written and he knows how to prevent and to protect the servants and open for them what no eye has seen and no ears can understand. That uh, any more we say from it people will think oh this is like spooky stuff and but the immensity of, of the power of the soul, immensity of the beings that come to support insan with their gifts and with their realities of who they are. This is a support from Budala, Nujaba, Nuqab, Awtadul, Akhyar, Jinni wa Malaika that what Allah gave to their souls of realities if they begin to support insan then, then this is that's what needed. And that's all by good character. Can you imagine Allah trying to open that by somebody who has hate in their heart or has anger that can't be controlled and tomorrow that person is no longer helping humans but trying to destroy humans. So this is all uh, security clearance that this heart has to be clean, that the, the reality has to be filled with immense love 
the structure has to be completely understood. The Sultanate of Sayyidina Muhammad has to be fully understood and that who is your king and who are you serving? Because the kingdom of my Lord is coming down, coming down. Uh, everyone sees the kingdom now, they see how the izzah and might of Allah when it comes upon this earth, what's happening with the earth, how everything shuts down. It was funny how many billions of dollars these people spend because this is to understand when people get scared, oh my gosh what are they going to do, they're doing face recognition, they're spying on everyone, they know how you're eating, how you're breathing. I say, yeah it's funny because they spend billions and trillions of dollars on face recognition. And they said, China has a camera like on every two feet, so as you walk it'll take all your face. No problem because Allah planned all of that and Allah planned its, its, its sort of funny solution. He sent them a, de a disease in which they have to wear a mask. <laughs> so as a result of this mask they said, now these trillions of dollars worth of cameras can't see anything. They can't understand anything, they can't pick up any images of anyone. So we have no understanding. When we see what the Dajjal does and fear comes to your heart, my God what's happening? Why are you to fear? Because the one who wrote that program, he wrote the funny solution to it. So now they said their, 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 their technology can't find anyone. They look in people's eyes, the cameras can't understand it and he made everybody to wear a burqa. All that they came against like they did in Sayyidina Nuh's time, they came against the ship of Sayyidina Nuh, they went and defecated into the ship to bother him before it launched. Allah said, no problem. Because Sayyidina Nuh was crying, sad, the why people are like this, they did like this. So don't worry, I will make their solution that they, they clean that ship sparkling clean. Allah gave them a sickness and its only cure was the defecation from the ship. So they had to go back, put that defecation that they put on the ship, they had to wipe it all upon themselves and feel good doing it until they made the ship sparkling clean. So means what they do, how people plan in this dunya, how they think they're going to control, how they're going to, to do this and do that, it's but one shout from Allah and their whole plan changes and all their directions are confused. So Allah's might and majesty can never be understood, not even by the servants of Allah they have no understanding, only from what Allah allows within their heart to understand. But when Allah says, don't have any fear and don't have any grief, then don't have fear and don't have grief, work on your meditation, work on your connection, work on that you're good with Allah good with Sayyidina Muhammad and that's all that's necessary. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa siri Surat al-Fatiha.